Ann's glass. Welcome back. Well, we're all used to the idea of recycling. We do it with paper, cans, glass, lots of things. Here's a man who's taking recycling to a fine art form. A street sweep runs along a city street. Hundreds of metal bristles brush against the curb, cleaning as they go. But what happens to these metal pieces once they've worn out? In the hands of sculptor Aaron Kramer, they become art. It was probably around 1990 or so that I found this little strip of metal that was wondering what it was. And uh, when it finally occurred to me what they were and how they got there, I um, started actually searching them out. Aaron is a graphic designer by trade, but he discovered his passion in found art sculpture while traveling. Got on a bike uh, in Park Forest, Illinois, and just started riding east. I was on the road for 13 and a half months. Uh, I traveled 11,500 miles on, on a bicycle. I got the idea to uh, start to collect bits and pieces of ephemera that um, uh, had to do with either where I was or things I was finding along the way. Those collected objects eventually led Aaron to creating spheres and gourds from recycled pieces such as coffee stirs or even old money. Find me a hundred of something and I'll be able to do something with it. I'm, I'm attracted to repetition of form as a basic kind of design fundamental. By using a combination of welding and weaving, even old street sweeper bristles can turn into an imposing sculpture. Aaron calls these pieces gourds. A gourd starts with a bearing race, which I scavenge out of a junkyard and uh, the bearing race is the top of the, the neck. And uh, then using thin rod, I weld onto it a, a, a rough frame. And uh, then that frame is reinforced with other welding and, and wire. He creates an armature by bending the wire rods into the shape of the gourd. With the addition of metal rings, a framework emerges that is ready for the welding process. It's a very rough, open weave. It starts to form a, a very loose organization over the surface, a loose skin in a sense. And then we just basically reinforce that and go in further and deeper and fill it in really solid. And eventually it, uh, it becomes a gourd. Aaron's work may transform junk into art, but amazingly, it retains much of its original form and mood. There is an urban aesthetic about a lot of the work and it tends to be a little hard-edged. Things tend to um, uh, have a lot of texture that age tends to lend to an object. And Aaron says that when people see his work for the first time, they are often surprised by its history. When you look at my work, you, you, you tend to initially see the design of it. You see the, the silhouette of the object. Then, as you get closer to it, you notice that it's made out of an unusual material. And then when I often tell people, well, that's made out of recycled street sweeper bristles, or that's made out of recycled coffee stirrers, uh, they're taken aback, and it adds this whole another level of intrigue to the work. For Aaron, the intrigue comes from taking a discarded piece and giving it new life. It's always been a belief of mine that trash is a failure of imagination. That when you see something uh, that is in a junkyard or see something that is uh, just thrown out on the ground, it's a potential resource and we waste so much in society. And uh, that, at the core of what I do, is an idea of reuse. I love these things. And this thing, has, it's like a game inside. Aren't they wonderful? Well, maybe, I hope you think so. Anyway, Aaron's work can be found at art fairs throughout the country as well as on the internet. And his work ranges from $11 all the way up to $2,500. Now, coming up next, we're gonna do some wood burning. But we're not burning wood.